Hi, I'm Katie Cantu with the Jasper County Conservation Department and I'm going to talk a little bit about bird feeding. Bird feeding is one of the most popular hobbies in the United States. It's second only to gardening. And I think there's lots of reasons why so many people enjoy watching birds, bringing them closer to their homes or their windows so they can get a better look at them. And uh, maybe you've fed birds before and want to get started in it again or just learn some new tips. Maybe you're new to this um, and hopefully this video will be informational for you. Um, I got exposed to birding at a very young age. Uh, my grandma had a big picture window in her kitchen and looked out over fields and some timber off in the distance and sitting on her window ledge she always had a pair of these old black binoculars and as kids we thought it was pretty cool we could sit there in the window and spy the wildlife out there um, on the farm and uh, that was kind of a neat thing to, to just sit and watch and spy and see all those different creatures as they traveled through. Uh, now my mom always hung a bird feeder outside her kitchen picture window and uh, we maybe didn't need binoculars for that but she always made sure that we had a good field guide or books about them uh, read, available so that if we saw something we could easily look it up and kind of match the colors and the shape and the size of those little birds and my brother and I spent hours poring through books like these um, and you know maybe anticipating some of the cool birds that that we might get to see visit our feeder uh, if you uh, just get some pictures maybe you can print something uh, download something online this was just a laminated two-side poster uh, that shows all the all the different um, birds that we might see here in our area um, so you can kind of take a look at that and uh, learn maybe what you might expect to visit you in your area um, so if you want to start feeding birds and you show up at the store and you're looking at all these different options and choices, it might seem a little overwhelming. Uh, what really is the best thing to feed birds? Uh, you'll notice there's lots of mixes and there might be this great fantastic special or sale on bird seed and uh, you know just a deal that's too good to pass up but those are often on mixes and so I've got some samples here some mixed seed uh, would have a little bit of black seeds in it the black oil sunflower seed um, it would have a whole lot of corn that's kind of cracked and ground up in there and then a lot of little uh, yellow round seeds called millet and uh, so these mixes tend to be um, the cheapest to buy, um, but there's also a reason for that uh, because it is mostly millet and cracked corn. Uh, and those are two sources of food that maybe aren't as popular to most birds around here. Um, the, the sunflower seed is uh, a little bit more desirable for, for, uh, for our birds. And uh, the problem with this is if you fill your feeder up with these mixes and the birds come and visit the feeder, you can see them. They will take their beak and they'll flick out the seeds and things they don't want to get to the stuff that they do. And a lot of your seed is going to end up maybe wasted on the ground. All right, so um, if you... If you uh, wanted to test this, and maybe you have some kids at home that are up for a challenge, you could buy different types of bird seed and, uh, and put it out and see which birds come to which type of seed more readily. Uh, but mixes are not always a good option because a lot of it really does go to waste. And for the birds that we have around here in our area, uh, most of them are going to be perfectly fine with just black oil sunflower seed. So if you buy any kind of seed at all, just get the plain old black oil sunflower seed and almost all of the birds that we have will be able to eat this and will readily come to that feeder and you will not have as much waste ending up on the ground either. Okay, uh, so sunflower seeds really are the all, all best idea. Um, you can take this one step further. Uh, when I started uh, working as a naturalist, I got involved with the uh, our local uh, Audubon Society chapter. And uh, so I learned some great information from experts and they really strongly believed in buying just the sunflower chips. And uh, so this is basically the sunflower seeds that have the holes removed. And uh, they're just nice, neat little pieces of the sunflower hearts. Uh, so this makes it even easier for smaller birds with little beaks. They don't even have to crack open the sunflower seed. They can just eat the chips. So not only are they getting the food they prefer, it's a lot easier for them to eat as well. 
Um, so they, the Audubon Society would usually have uh, one feeder of just the sunflower seeds, the whole pieces, and, and one f feeder full of just the chips. Um, the chips might be a little bit harder to find. We used to have some places locally that sold it bulk. Um, you might have to do some looking around and it will be a little bit more expensive, but there's way less waste with these seeds. Um, the other thing about some of the, just the sunflower chips and heart pieces is when the birds crack open the, the holes, they all fall on the ground and it can be kind of messy. So when you feed them just the hearts, it's a much neater, cleaner way to feed the birds, I guess. So uh, keep that in mind. Although because they don't have the holes, uh, they can get damp inside the feeder, especially if it rains or snows, and they could start to uh, go bad, maybe mold a little bit. So you're, you're going to have to fill um, your feeders with sunflower chips more frequently and put less seed in them at a time. Make sure the birds eat that down within a day or two um, before you fill it up uh, again. So just some things to keep about, um, um, in mind, but when you go to the store to buy seed, really Black oil sunflower seed is, is the only thing you really need to consider. And what's that going to attract? Well, just looking here at some of our common birds, everybody loves to see the cardinals come in. Then the cardinals have thick beaks. So they have no problem uh, crushing open those sunflower seed shells. They will not eat the millet and corn and stuff. They'll probably toss that up to the side. So that's one reason why you don't want those cheap mixes. Um, finches and sparrows will, will also come and eat those seeds. Now, uh, one kind of bird that likes the cracked corn and millet a lot are house sparrows. And if you're familiar with your birds, you know that house sparrows are not native to our area. They were brought over from Europe, and they compete with a lot of our uh, smaller songbirds that we have here. Um, they're not really the most desirable birds to attract. And so that's another reason to just have the sunflower seed. Uh, sparrows that we do get really excited about seeing, especially in the spring when they start migrating back through again, uh, would be white-throated sparrows, song sparrows, fox sparrows. Um, those are all really cool to see. They're a little trickier to identify, uh, but they're really neat to watch and see. You can get house finches, purple finches, um, gold finches are a lot of fun too to have. Now, you might be thinking with gold finches, wait a minute, I gotta get those tiny little thistle seeds for them, right? And you can. All right, so if you're pretty serious about goldfinches, you can get just a thistle seed feeder for them. Um, but I would only do that if you have lots of goldfinches that come through and eat that down fairly quickly. Because kind of like um, sunflower pieces, uh, they can get wet and moldy. Um, they don't last as long. Um, so if you don't have goldfinches coming in regularly to eat that all down, um, it's not going to stay very nice. And goldfinches will eat sunflower seed like all the other birds do, especially the, the chips. Um, so you don't really have to have a thistle seed feeder. Um, some other birds that come, of course, are the woodpeckers. We, the smallest woodpecker we have are downy woodpeckers. Slightly larger are the hairy woodpeckers. Uh, we have red-bellied woodpe woodpeckers, which you don't really see their red belly because they're clinging to the side of the tree, but they do have a little red on their tummy. And then we have a large woodpecker called a flicker um, that seems very colorful and showy. They've got stripes and spots and sort of a black mustache that, on their face. and um, So they're all really fun to watch as well. Uh, nuthatches, the most common type of nuthatch you'll see are the white-breasted nuthatches, but we can also get the little red-breasted nuthatches, and they're pretty cute little guys. They usually live a little bit farther north from our area, but they do come down in the wintertime sometimes seeking out food, especially if it's really snowy um, like it's been. And then of course one of my favorites are the chickadees. And I don't think there's anything more fun than watching the little chickadees swoop down, pick one seed out of their feeder and fly back up in the tree and eat it. Um, I think they've got the, the cutest little personalities. And another really common one are the blue jays. And that's one some folks aren't as excited to see because they are big and they swoop in and maybe chase the other little birds out. Um, I honestly, I don't mind blue jays uh, that much. I think they're kind of fun to watch too. All these birds sort of have their own little um, personalities and habits that you'll pick up on as you watch them come to your feeder, which is a lot of fun. Um, so those are some of the different types of birds and they will all eat sunflower seed. So with all those birds, what kind of feeder do you get? There's lots of options for that too. And I would recommend just getting a tube feeder that you can hang. Um, I have a crab apple tree outside my kitchen windows and I hang them using plant hooks. Uh, or you can get a big uh, shepherd's hook that you stick down in the ground. Uh, and then 
I've got some black oil sunflower seed in this one, but there's some there's some ports and little perches where these birds could all have space to land and just an open port to pick out the seed. Now what's really nice about this feeder and why I recommend this is because I live in town and we happen to have a lot of squirrels in our neighborhood. <laughs> and everybody has mixed feelings about squirrels. Some people really don't care. They'll feed whatever wants to come. Um, some people like me uh, put out corn or something for the squirrels somewhere else, but try to keep them out of their bird feeder. And so that's, that's kind of where I stand. I'm not buying all this uh, expensive bird seed just to feed it to squirrels. They, I give them corn and other things, but uh, I want to keep squirrels out. So how do you do that? Well, this, this style of feeder is ingenious. This is uh, basically a metal cage around the tube, and it has a spring in it. And if the squirrel reaches out, puts his paws on this feeder, and applies any weight at all, the whole thing locks down, and there's metal plates that cover up those ports that the squirrel cannot chew through. All right, so you have to have um, the metal on there so that they can't get in there, and they don't. They can hang on this, and they'll struggle with it, and maybe tip it around a little bit, um, but once there's a uh, weight on there, it locks down. All right, this particular model is called a Squirrel X. I believe I got this at Tyson's. Um, there's also a green tube feeder called the Squirrel Buster, and that is available at Earl May. Uh, you can, if you're an online shopper, there's lots of options on Amazon and at some of the home and garden centers and the big box stores. You just check it out, but I highly recommend getting something um, that would lock the squirrels out. And then you don't have to worry about any other kind of baffles or anything else to deter them. And you're ensuring that the birds are the ones coming to get the seed and that it's not just overtaken by squirrels because they do pretty okay too. Alright, so uh, that's what I would recommend for a feeder. If you want to take the feeder uh, one step further, you might want to put out just sort of an open platform or tray, um, not right on the ground, uh, but just maybe kind of knee or waist high, and uh, you can put a few seeds in there. Now the squirrels could get into that too, but cardinals, juncos, the larger birds like blue jays and the larger woodpeckers, they would probably all eat out of that open tray, but just know that a lot of other animals might come along and do that as well too. And the, the other kind of feeder that I recommend, especially in the winter time to sort of supplement all this, is a suet feeder. And you can buy blocks of suet, suet or the rendered animal fat basically, and it might have seed mixes and things uh, in it as well. Um, and they, they fit into sort of a wire uh, cage type feeder. And I, I buy the peanut kind because a lot of woodpeckers and nuthatches and birds also like to eat peanuts. So I buy the suet with the peanuts in it. And then my little suet feeder has an additional cage around it with a, with a roof, a lid on the top, so that only the little birds can, that can fit through the outer cage can get inside to the suet. Again, I'm, I'm keeping the squirrels out of it and um, larger birds that we might not want like grackles and starlings and crows and things like that because they would also like the suet so and bl even blue jays so unless you want to feed blue jays suet but um, that's that's what I would recommend is kind of putting sort of a double cage around everything so that you get the little birds that that you want to see one step further with bird feeding. Again, if you really want to provide the best habitat and make your yard super attractive to little birds, provide water. And this was something I knew for years and years and I finally uh, broke down and invested the money in a heated bird bath. And you know, they're not cheap, but especially this time of year when everything's frozen and covered by layers of snow and ice, those little animals are having a hard time finding the water that they need. And if you can provide that, um, that will make your feeding station, you know, your window all the more desirable to stop at. And um, so that would be also a, a good thing to consider. Now, a lot of folks are worried that they might start feeding birds and then maybe go on vacation or maybe they just don't keep up with it and the feeders haven't been filled up in a while and they start to worry that, oh, you know what, maybe those little birds are going to starve or they're not going to do very well if, if that happens. 
Well, the answer to that is, of, of course not. They are wild animals. Uh, they find food all over. Your yard is not the only place that they're going to stop at. They tend to travel in, in feeding flocks together, and they have a circuit that they follow every day, and they know typically where they can stop and find the food, and you want your yard to be one of those stops. Um, if they stop at your yard and there's nothing there for them, they're simply going to move on to the next stop. And you'll notice that when they come in waves, usually the cardinals and the juncos and sparrows are sort of in a group. Um, the nuthatches and chickadees and woodpeckers might kind of be in their own little flock or group. It's kind of interesting to see how they move like that. But that's what they do. So if you, do, if you stop feeding, um, don't worry about it because the birds, they will be fine. They will simply move on to a new area. Um, so with that in mind, it might take a, mo take a little while, a little patience for them to even find your, your feeding station, but once they do and you keep it going, um, you should have pretty good success. All right, I have one more uh, important thing about bird feeding. Um, the number one cause of death for these little birds might not be what you would originally think. The, the biggest threat to a lot of birds, especially in towns and cities, are cats. So many people let their cats roam outside and you may not think that your kitty is a killer but they have that instinct and they do prowl around and find where birds tend to flock especially when they're very vulnerable in the winter time and they will take advantage of that whether they eat the bird or they just kill it to kill it. Uh, cats are a huge problem. Um, if you have a cat, please keep it inside and talk to your neighbors about that. I have two cats uh, that don't leave my house. They get to watch everything out from the windows. Um, and I, I will notice sometimes when I feel like there should be a lot of birds coming to my feeder and it's been pretty quiet for a while, and then all of a sudden I'll, I'll see maybe some stray cat roaming through my yard and checking out, you know, kind of walking under my feeders, and I'll realize, yep, that's why I'm not seeing the birds. So cats can be a huge problem. And uh, so to keep the birds safe, um, you know, keep that in mind. We, we want to keep cats from, from roaming around. All right, that is the basics of bird feeding. Black oil, sunflower seed, uh, a tube or platform feeder that's easy for the birds to, to get to for a variety of, of shapes and sizes of birds. Maybe provide water uh, if you really get into it and make sure we try and keep cats away the best we can. And that will ensure great bird feeding success. And this is truly something you can enjoy uh, for a lifetime. In introduce this to a child. Kids will be absolutely enthralled with getting to see uh, little birds come up close to the window uh, and be able to see their little, their little habits and behaviors. It's so much fun. So thanks for joining me and enjoy seeing birds in your backyard. Hi everybody, it's Jade Reed here today with another conservation craft. Uh, so today we're going to be making bird seed ornaments. Um, this is something really fun and easy you can do and it's great to do in the winter to kind of help supplement um, feeding for wintering birds. If you purchase one of our bird seed ornament packages um, here at the office, um, most of these supplies will be in the package for you. Um, otherwise, the recipe is super simple and anybody can get these ingredients pretty much anywhere. Um, so today we're going to make birdseed ornaments. Uh, first, our ingredients, we have birdseed. Um, this is a fruit berry mix just to give kind of a variation for the birds. We have cold water, hot water, Knox gelatin. Um, you're going to need two packages of that. Uh, we have some corn syrup and then You'll need a cookie cutter. Uh, you'll use multiple cookie cutters. We're doing heart-shaped ones for Valentine's Day. Uh, you'll need some straws cut up, as well as some string to hang your birdseed ornaments outside. So to start our ornaments, we're going to start with the cold water. You can do a half a cup of cold water, put it in a container, then we're going to take our Knox gelatin and we're going to put it in there.
We're gonna stir it until it's completely dissolved. All right, that looks pretty dissolved to me. Um, so we're going to add our boiling hot water. Um, I already boiled this ahead of time. We're gonna stir this until it is completely dissolved as well. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So our next step is to add two tablespoons of corn syrup. and we're gonna stir that up. Now the fun part. We're gonna add our bird seed. So I have measured out two and a half cups of bird seed. So this is actually gonna make quite a few ornaments. Uh, so if you did purchase one of our bird seed ornament packages, we only give you one cookie cutter. Um, so you can use other cookie cutters around your house or you could use uh, the bottoms of small cups. Uh, to be kind of your mold for these ornaments. Put that dried fruit in there, it actually smells kind of good. All right, so I have it stirred in here pretty good. Um, I'll kind of show you. It still is a little soupy, and we need that to be a little bit thicker so that when we put them in the ornaments, it'll hold its form and the liquid won't seep out of the ornament. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this in the fridge for about 10 minutes, uh, and then we'll come back. Alrighty, so we have popped this in the fridge for about 10 minutes. You can see, it's pretty thick. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything runny in it, so that's what we wanted. Um, now I've got a cookie sheet, and I put some parchment paper on it just so that it doesn't get too sticky, and it'll be easy to take off. Um, and again, um, I only have one cookie cutter with me. Uh, normally you would have multiple cookie cutters, um, and so we're just gonna do it with the one today, and then um, you guys can do it with more at home. So I'm just gonna take some of this, mix it up here again. There's still a little bit of liquid. If you feel like maybe it's still too liquidy, go ahead and pop that back into the fridge just for a little bit longer. All right, so then I'm just gonna fill up my cookie cutter with the bird seed. Press it in there nice and good. Then we're gonna take our straws so that I had pre-cut up. I'm just gonna stick it right in the middle there and make sure it goes all the way to the ground. To the bottom of that cookie sheet. And if you have to, fill in some more around it. And we're gonna leave it like that. And that is how we're going to put it in the freezer. So you can freeze it uh, for up to 24 hours and then We'll go put this in the freezer and we'll come back and we'll show you what to do after that. Alrighty guys, now um, our bird seed ornaments have been in the freezer for an extended period of time. I didn't put them in overnight. Um, it didn't really need that. 
uh, but you can do it overnight if you feel like yours do need that. Um, so you can see it's right here. I have that straw through it. I went ahead and since I only had one cookie cutter, I found an old ice cream dish and I made one out of this as well too. So you could use virtually anything uh, to make these birdseed ornaments, which is kind of fun. So I'm just going to pull my straw out and it did make a hole. You can see it made a hole. If it didn't, I would just use like a toothpick or something to try to make sure that the hole goes all the way through. Then I'm just gonna push it out. Now what I did is I let it sit out um, from the freezer for about a minute and it unthawed just enough for me to be able to just pop it right out of the cookie cutter. Then I'm gonna take my string and we're just gonna loop it through. Now it was frozen, so it's probably going to start unthawing as you're working with it. So you wanna kinda be a little quick about it to try to get these outside. Now these birdseed ornaments are really fun to make, um, but they're really only good for winter bird feeding. And so, just have to be careful because if you make them in the summer it's probably gonna melt as soon as you take it outside so that's why these are great for winter bird feeding and there we go we have an ornament bird feeder so I'm gonna do that with this one as well too but thank you guys for joining us for this awesome program and we look forward to seeing your guys's conservation craft everybody, Jade here again, and uh, on top of our bird feeder ornaments that we are making, I thought I'd show you guys a couple other types of easy bird feeders that you guys can make at home um, with some super simple stuff. So, um, peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanut butter, you can use sun butter, um, you can use almond butter, um, lots of different variants, but we're going to have some peanut butter, uh, some bird seed. And I have some cereal and I have pipe cleaners and then a pine cone. So the first bird feeder that I'm going to show you is super simple one. You take your pipe cleaner. You can use string too. You simply take your old cereal and you string it on just like this. And then when you're done, you'll tie a loop on it and hang it outside and the birds will peck on the cereal. Our second one that we're gonna do is one that I like to do personally. Just peanut butter, a pine cone. I have a plate here because it does get kind of sticky. And then you can use a string or a pipe cleaner to wrap around it because you're gonna hang this in the tree as well. So you're just gonna take your peanut butter and you're just going to lather it in there just so I know that it's gonna stick. And since it's cold outside, 
The peanut butter will freeze up a little bit so it'll stick on it better. But now we have our peanut butter pine cone bird feeder and our part cleaner cereal bird feeder to go along with our ornament bird feeder. Thank you guys!